edition of Fox Sports. We are We are St. Louis. Over the weekend, a tough series for St. Louis. After a win on Friday night, the bats came alive for Pittsburgh against the St. Louis bullpen. The Pirates, in taking two of three, have moved into first place. And now Adam Wainwright and the St. Louis Cardinals welcome the Cincinnati Reds to Bush. turn here in the middle of America St. Louis Missouri and Bush Stadium a beautiful night for baseball as the Cardinals play host to the Cincinnati Reds the Reds are loaded with big bats in the middle of their lineup he knows them well that's Yadier Molina he'll team up with Adam Wainwright tonight and welcome to St. Louis Cardinals baseball that's Rick Horton I'm Dan McLaughlin and Rick, let's jump right into it. First bank, first take. The Cardinals since 2004, whether it be at Bush Stadium 2 or at this ballpark, really have play, played the Reds very tough. And with the Cardinals struggling the last 48 hours, this could be the perfect antidote. Uh, the Reds just have not played well here at all. The Cardinals 50 and 24, winning percentage close to 700. Only the Brewers, Brewers and the Pirates a bigger number. In fact, that's where the Pirates are right now in Milwaukee. The Cardinals also have a good pitching matchup here today in game one. It is Matt Latos, the former San Diego Padre, getting the start for the Cincinnati Reds. Adam Wainwright, he's been a lot of smiles this year. Will it carry over to game one?
Team set here at Bush Stadium. Blues are in the playoffs and Fox Sports Midwest Bud Light and the Blues present outdoor playoff rallies before every home game. Enjoy bands and a great pregame party tomorrow night before the Blues and Kings from Scott Trade Center. Good luck to the St. Louis Blues. Good luck to Adam Wainwright as Adam will get the start here this evening and finishing up his warm-up tosses and trying to make it five in a row. Wainwright was very good, Dan, in his last outing against the Nationals. He had not pitched well in his career in Washington, hasn't pitched well against the Reds either, but maybe he'll buck that trend as well. So big number 50 is on the mound. There's a live look at Adam warming up here at Bush Stadium. We've got more coming up on Fox Sports Midwest. one of this three game series Cincinnati and St. Louis and some changes in that bullpen tonight Rick Horton. Cardinals bring up Seth Manis from AAA and when you think of Manis think control not an overpowering right hander only 10 walks in 160 plus innings a year ago it gives the Cardinals a different look in their bullpen. Little shake up by John Mosellock and Mike Matheny we'll talk about Manis, we'll talk about the Cardinals we'll also talk about the dominance of Adam Wainwright throughout his career that's next.
saw Adam Wainwright pitch here at Bush Stadium. He threw his fifth career shutout. Here's a look back at the five most dominating starts in Adam Wainwright's career. Swing and a miss. Wainwright, another strikeout. Complete game for Adam Wainwright. His first career complete game shutout. Wainwright goes the distance. Masterful performance and win number 16. It only took 110 pitches. That is a nasty breaking ball that time. Curveball and a strikeout. Wainwright goes the distance. A four-hit shutout. Good fastball on the inside corner. Swing and a miss on a breaking pitch. And that's exactly what Adam Wainwright does. His fourth career shutout. Got him on the outside corner. Got him! 12 strikeouts as Wainwright goes the distance. Brought to you by Bud Light, the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. See your Mid-America Chevy dealer or log on to stlchevy.com. Dobbs Tire Auto Centers, number one for quality tires and expert auto service. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Steak and Shake. Steak and Shake, just no equal. Just a perfect night for baseball. NL Central Showdown. Reds back in St. Louis already. These two teams will face each other 19 times. And a look at Dusty Baker's lineup here for game number one to face the always tough righty, Adam Wainwright. And it's a lineup that some of these guys really producing at numbers that we expect them to be at. How about Shin Su Chu? Off to a great start. High on base percentage, hitting 344. Then Cozart and Votto. Phillips, Bruce, Frazier, Xavier Paul to start in left. They have some injuries to talk about. Mesoraco is behind the plate, and then Matt Leto is still bat ninth. It's Holiday, Jay, and Craig in the outfield. Freeze, Cosmo on the left side. Carpenter and Ty Wigginton getting the start at first. And behind the plate, the always reliable Yadier Molina around the horn. It was brought to you by Dobbs, and there's Ty Wigginton. Wigginton playing first base today with Carlos Beltran on the bench. Beltran feeling a little bit ill. He's available and a little bit 
under the weather a day ago. And there's the numbers for Adam Wainwright looking for his fifth victory. And what you really love about Wainwright is the fact that he is striking out so many batters and he's walked only one and that was semi-intentional. That is just incredible numbers. Walk to strikeout ratio. Wainwright has been very, very good at controlling the counts. Shin Su Chu. Talked about it in the first series with the Reds. They really struggled at the top of their lineup a year ago. On base percentage was awful. Under 300. So they went out and got Chu, and he has delivered. He slices one into the corner, and that's how we start the series. It's a fair ball. Dug out by Holiday, and Chu will stop at second base. It's a leadoff double. So you'd think that leadoff batters always take a pitch, work a deep count. That's how they get good on base percentages. Well, every once in a while, they take that pitch right down central and give it a rip. And that's what Chu just did. He has been on base, Dan, almost half the time. And just incredible. He leads the league in on base percentage. And has now had, of the 26 games he's been in, he's been on base 25 of those games. Here is Zach Cozart. At the second spot in the lineup, looking to bunt and pushes it foul. You mentioned a year ago they had Drew Stubbs in that leadoff spot. Stubbs, more of a base stealer and pretty exciting player. And we kind of saw some good moments from him in the outfield and on the base pass, but he struck out so much. And Chu brings this Reds team something they haven't had for a couple of years. And the Reds have been winning at home, 12 and 4 at home, but on the road only two wins, two and eight. Here's the 0 1 pitch to the shortstop tonight. Long look by Wainwright. Zach Cozart pulls it back. And you see the Reds bunting here in the first inning, realizing that Wainwright has been so good this year. You get somebody in scoring position, even early in a game, trying to sacrifice. Dusty Baker says, This may be my best chance tonight. Who knows? And it's part of setting up your lineup to where you've got a traditional number two batter that can do things with the bat, like move runners over and bunt. When you have a power guy in that lineup, you're really hesitant to do this early on. Trying to keep Chu close at second. And it's taken for a bowl outside. Two balls and one strike. Wainwright, his last time out was against Washington. And he was terrific. I asked Mike Matheny about lifting Waino in that game. He said it was a short conversation. He was none too pleased. Probably wasn't too happy with him the day after. But so what? Club got the win and so did Waino. There's the bunt, and Wainwright only play is to go to first. Chu advancing to third on the sacrifice. When trying to sacrifice, the pitcher generally tries to throw the ball up in the zone. They're typically difficult pitches to bunt. You've got to get on top of it. Cozart gets that job done, deadens the ball in front of Wainwright, and advances Chu. Many teams in the league have elected just not to pitch to Joey Votto. Average is down this year at 284. The infield is in, and that's why he delivers a one-run lead for Cincinnati. Joey Votto with his 11th RBI. But, Rick, you look at the on-base percentage of Joey Votto coming into play tonight, 444. He had already been walked 26 times, so many teams electing not to deal with a former MVP. This time it's a curveball up a bit in the zone to Votto. I asked some of the Reds personnel, will Votto ever start to expand his zone to become the RBI guy and, and not just take walks? And the answer was an emphatic no. He is a guy that is very disciplined at the plate. He's going to take his walks. You give them to him. And he just believes that's the way you hit. And you can't kind of argue with a guy that's hitting 316 in his career. Because of the injuries that the Reds have had, the second baseman will bat cleanup, and he has been a, a really versatile player in his years in Cincinnati as far as where he lands in the lineup. He's batted leadoff, second, third, and fourth. I like him number two the best. And here's a 1-0 pitch. He gives the combination of the power potential that I was talking about earlier, but he also can 
be pretty nifty with the bat. He can hit the ball the other way. He can bunt. He can do a lot of other things. He's just really a complete player. And I know every time I compliment Brandon Phillips, I get a lot of bad comments from Cardinal fans because they love to hate Brandon Phillips. But there's no denying he's a good player. Very good player. The 2-0 pitch. One thing we have seen from Adam Wainwright this season, increase in velocity. Now, it's not back to where it was when he was 95 to 97, but increased velocity, late movement, and that big 12 to 6 curveball has come back, too. Everything sharp, too. His slider slash cutter, his curveball, the fastball, he's just has a lot of sharp pitches and location has been very, very good. He has walked one man this year. That's it. That was in his previous start in Washington. And you think about strategy at that time of the game, it was probably by design and pitching around one of the Washington hitters in their lineup. And uh, that's been the only walk this season for Adam Wainwright. He walked Bryce Harper in a situation where Harper could do some damage. And he wasn't kind of, he was still trying to let Harper get himself out, so he just did a masterful job of, of control, controlling the this, this strike zone in that game as well. And when you've got a starting pitcher, your ace, leading the way like that, it's resulted in the other Cardinal starters following suit. A lot of strikeouts, very few walks out of this Cardinal starting staff. Outfield is deep, the 3-1 pitch is taken for a ball. It's one of those rare walks issued this season by Wainwright. First runner allowed in the first inning by Adam here in 2013. Brings in Jay Bruce. Just joining us, the news of the day here at the ballpark, Mark Zipchinski, option to AAA Memphis. The Cardinals purchased the contract of a right-hander, Seth Manus from Memphis. He was an 11th round pick out of East Carolina University. So only one lefty to face the many lefties in this lineup out of the bullpen. And you think about Bruce, you think about Votto, you think about Shin Tzu Chu. All lefties that can hurt you, so it'll be interesting in this series for Mike Matheny to try to mix and match with Randy Choate and use him at the right time in the right place. There'll be multiple opportunities to use him. When do you? Manus, by the way, was the Cardinals minor league pitcher of the year a season ago. He is issued, listen to this, a total of 18 walks, and he has faced 993 batters. That is hard to do. So he is a pitch maker, off speed, is very good, and throws strikes. N nearly 250 minor league innings. Not an overpowering pitcher, a guy with a sinker, and, and, and I do like the fact, Dan, and we mentioned it in the open, that he brings a different kind of look to the Cardinal pen. Not a, another guy throwing 98 and with great stuff and strikeout pitcher, but a guy who's a guy that's going to throw strikes, keep the ball down in the zone, not walk anybody, and get some double plays. So I, I like the fact that it's a different look so you can change up your bullpen from day to day. Here is a 1-2. Runners stay put at first and second. And Manus is a guy that when you start looking at the roles of the bullpen and it's not like it was a year ago with Mott out. You've got Mahika out of the seventh now closing games out. Rosenthal in the eighth. Kelly now takes on a greater role. So your long man very well could be Manus. And, and he's been starting. He's been starting. And the Cardinals really haven't had an issue as far as starters not going deep in games. So... That has not been a problem this year, and he can pitch on back-to-back -back days. And it's another reason you pitch well in spring training because you're opening some eyes, even though he just was there, I don't want to say as a courtesy, he was invited to spring training as a rostered player. Actually, he was a non-rostered player, but he was invited because he pitched so well the year before and opened some eyes, and Cardinal staff remembered Runners at first and second, the 3-2 pitch. Got him. Strikeout of Bruce. Took some off that curveball, 76 miles an hour. And the first strikeout of the night for Adam Wainwright. 
Well, you talked about the 12 to 6 curveball, Dan, and that's what we see here from Wainwright to Jay Bruce, who's been struggling a bit. Jay with just one home run on the season. There's the spin of the ball, 12 to 6 on the clock. Starts out about waist high and ends up in the dirt by the time the ball gets to the plate. A lot of late movement, a lot of sharp movement from Wainwright. Replay brought to you by Plaza Tire Service. This pitch is popped up off the bat of Todd Frazier. Ty Wigginton in foul territory makes the catch. Wigginton his first start at first base this year. Reds grab an early lead. This year, it's John Jay, then Carpenter and Holiday, Craig Molina, Freeze, Wigginton, Cosma, Wainwright. The defense brought to you by Dobbs. Xavier Paul is in left, Chew in center, Jay Bruce is in right. For Paul, it's his first start in the outfield this year. Frazier and Cozart on the left side, Phillips and Vado on the right side, and Devin Messarocco. He's behind the plate. Matt Latos, very good right-hander on the mound for Cincinnati. Five starts for Cincinnati this year, all quality starts, and Cardinal fans may remember his start here the last time the Reds were in town. The Cardinals took two out of three games. He started that game where the Reds scored nine runs in the ninth inning. We remember that game well. That was Jaime Garcia and Latos, and it was also the game that Chu dropped two balls in center field. So a quality start because there were some unearned, unearned runs in that game. John Jay back to the familiar spot of leadoff tonight. Nine for 20 in his career against Latos. Also four for his last eight. And here's a 1-0 pitch. Latos, for whatever reason, though, outside of his last start, for the most part, has really struggled here at Bush Stadium and against the Cardinals. He sure has, especially here at Bush Stadium. Some of those starts came early in his career. They really think he's matured, not only as a pitcher, but the Reds broadcasters telling me about the game where Chu dropped the two balls in center. He went out of his way to approach Chu and kind of reinstate him and say, hey, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. And, and that's not the Latos that we heard about early in his career at all. And that is a leadoff walk. And Latos already shaking his head. His career ERA is over 10 in five starts here at Bush Stadium. But last two outings here, he surrendered just two earned runs over 11 innings. And he's working on 11 scoreless innings. Beat the Cubs his last outing, seven solid innings. And he can get some strikeouts. He's not afraid to pitch in, and his ball moves a lot. And he's got kind of a running fastball. He's got a slider curve. He throws the breaking pitch different speeds. So he has kind of a pretty solid deep repertoire. A lot warmer here tonight. We expect that tomorrow and on Wednesday. And 
you would hope that would have a, a positive effect on this lineup. The weather heats up and the bats heat up as well. We have played in a lot of cold weather this year. Not to make excuses, but it is tough to hit in cold weather. The Cardinals have played in a bunch in this first month. A lot of low team averages in the National League in general, Dan. A lot of teams hitting around 240. So it's been chilly around Major League Baseball. A lot of teams have lost a lot of games in the early going. Yeah. The doubleheaders that pile up are going to matter. The Cardinals hitting 247 as a team. And that's just what the Reds are hitting. And the difference with the Reds is the Cardinals are hitting better with runners in scoring position and scoring more runs than St. Louis. There's the 0 2 pitch. Carpenter called out on strikes. Four straight balls to start the game, then three straight strikes. Reds won in Washington over the weekend. As you get a look at the numbers for Holiday, ended that eight game road losing skid. It was a 5 2 win yesterday. Talked about this differential, how they play at home as opposed to what they've done on the road. That's the uh, largest differential in baseball. And again, it's worth repeating 12 wins at home, 12 and 4, 2 and 8 for Dusty Baker on the road. Yeah, they won one out of four games in Washington to start this road trip. They only hit 175 as a team. And, and their big complaint, not their bullpen, they are anchored by a couple of good pitchers in Broxton and a great one in Chapman, actually. But with the good starting pitching not been the problem. They're just not hitting like they thought they would. Here is the 0 1 pitch. Swung on and missed by Holiday 0 and 2. Everybody's got a thought about Dusty Baker, and he certainly has a great personality that he brings to the game. I'm a big fan of Dusty Baker's, and we've had some dust ups with him, no pun intended. But the 63 year old manager, I think, is. Very good at what he does. Three time manager of the year. Here's the 0 2. Dusty, all those great years he had with San Francisco, one win shy of a World Series championship with them, and also one win shy of getting to a World Series with the Chicago Cubs. Can you imagine being that manager or GM, the guy that builds a team to lead the Chicago Cubs not just in the postseason but to a World Series. you will own the town. Ball scoots away and John Jay is in scoring position. So now you can throw out every number you've ever seen and start taking a look at what the Cardinals do with runners in scoring position. Nezirako complaining about Holiday not getting out of the way, but he doesn't have to. He didn't have to go anywhere. It's his box. He could have stayed right where he was. So Mezzarocco can complain all he wants. Holiday's entitled to that spot in the box. 335 average with runners in scoring position for the Cardinals. And it's even better with two outs at 362. That's amazing. That's one of the reasons why the team is in a position they're in. Great starting pitching and also timely hitting. Big gap in left center and Holiday shoots it out to right. Catch is made by Bruce. Mentioned that Mark Zepchinski has been optioned to Triple A Memphis. So one lefty in that bullpen for Mike Matheny. That's Randy Choate. Let's check in with Jim with more on that. Yeah, Mike was asked about having just one lefty for this series before the game. And he said Zepchinski wasn't really being used as a matchup guy anyway. Lefties were hitting 385 against Zepchinski. And according to John Mazalak, they want Mark to go down to AAA, work through some things, and get himself back on track, Dan. It's also a move, Rick, and I, I would assume you would agree with this. It's a shakeup. Yeah. It's it's something that catches your attention if you're wearing the birds on the bat. Well, you caught my attention in your comment, and this is where the Cardinals are, it, and it's interesting to evaluate just where are they right now. I mean, you'd say 48 hours ago, you'd say not a bad spot. Hit to the right side and knocked down by Phillips. That will save a run. 
And it will be a base hit, I believe, for Alan Craig. Should be a hit, Dan, and Craig has not hit Cincinnati well. They've handled it better than any team in baseball, in fact. The Reds have been just 188, but this ball hit to the left of Phillips, and he's just got to try to keep that in the infield, make sure that run doesn't score. Gold Glover. Would have been a nice play if he made it, and he's made those before. But the point is, 48 hours ago, we were all thrilled about where the Cardinals were. They were six games over 500, fourth best record in baseball. And within a 48-hour period, some of the problems have arisen out of the bullpen, and they've maybe gotten worse. And so now we're kind of in panic mode. Some are, but I don't think panic is the right way to go about it. But it's not bad to tinker some and to maybe send some little messages that, look, performance matters. And I think that's part of the bullpen move the Cardinals made, and I think it makes sense. It's not a, a knee-jerk reaction. It's not a house cleaning, but no. it catches your attention. It's a step. When you think about Mark Zipchinski in 2011 and the role that he played down the stretch, how good he was. You think about Zipchinski against Milwaukee and those matchups with Prince Fielder in postseason play. If he doesn't have those matchups, the team is not playing for a World Series championship. And Hanging with Zepp on the Cardinals winter car caravan for a couple of days. One of the things that found out just by looking at his stats even closer the second half of the season ERA under two, right? So he had a bad first half last year, but his second half was good. As a Rocco catcher trying to learn the trade. Didn't like that location and he's telling Latos. Keep that shoulder in, don't fly out, and catcher's going to be the first one to see that. Pitcher feels it, but not bad to have a catcher remind you. And they, they really miss Ryan Hannigan behind the plate because he's a guy that handles the pitchers very, very well. Molina, a couple of hops to second. Flipped over, and we move to the second. 1 nothing Cincinnati. Some of the biggest names in baseball, Molina, Phillips, Wainwright, the Cincinnati Reds and the St. Louis Cardinals here in game one from Bush Stadium. Wainwright gave up a run in that first inning and the problem, the leadoff double by Sin Su Chu and Xavier Paul, who's been a leadoff hitter in his career, leads off here in the second inning. And the Reds really, Dan, have struggled to get production in left field since losing Ryan Ludwig. And now Chris Heisey is out, also on the disabled list, the seventh player on the DL for the Reds. He has hamstring issues. It happened 
couple of days ago. So Paul getting the start. And they have just really struggled to find any kind of offense from left field. Here's a 1-0 pitch to Paul. Taken low and in. Ryan Ludwig actually at the ballpark today. The Reds asked him to come in. They have a team function here in St. Louis during this road trip. They wanted him around for that. And he still has his arm in a sling. And his shoulder separation and his torn labrum were pretty nasty. So he is not expected to be back anytime soon. But his, his attitude, as we would expect, was very, very good. Prior to coming to St. Louis, and there is uh, Walt Jockety and his staff here in town. But prior to coming to St. Louis, Ryan had told me that basically he was going to give it one more shot in the minor leagues. And it was John Mosellock who reached out to Ryan and his representation and said, we'll give you a shot. He comes to the minor leagues and puts up big numbers. And John had seen him play and said, we need to take a look at this guy and, and see what's left in the tank. And little did we know there was a ton. Silver Slugger, All-Star. And it's one of those cases that it's a guy that just needed a chance. And he got it and made the most of it. Here's a ground ball that's hit to second. And Paul is retired. You know, sometimes you for, forget that you got that chance, and then you kind of get used to your situation, but not Ryan Ludwig. He said exactly what you said today to me. He said, how can I be upset about where I am right now? I want to be playing, but I know I got hurt earlier in my career, and I thought I was done, and I'm just so grateful that I got a second shot, and I'm going to work to get another one. Just perfect attitude, and... You know, Wainwright's had his share of issues, too, injuries. And most notably, the Tommy John. And, you know, there's it's got to creep into your head. Am I ever going to be back again? This is Devin Messarocco. And, uh, speaking of Tommy John, you never know. There's one guy that's had it, Jaime Garcia. And we're still in that wait-and-see area right now with Jason Mott, Cardinals closer. Messarocco hits it in the air down the right field line and it's out of play and going back to Ludwig just for a moment you know he had had some odd injuries too early in his career when he was hit by a pitch and a wrist injury uh, he also had a knee injury so there were different ailments that he dealt with along the way and clearly he's got talent and he showed it off here in St. Louis he grew up by the way a Reds fan so his uh, grandparents I love the Reds, and he said it's a dream come true to be playing for Cincinnati. Reds gave him a shot last year, and somewhat of a slow start, and then a big difference maker for about four months of the season. The final four, and parlayed that into a nice deal. He did not hit well in San Diego, did not hit well with Pittsburgh. And the Reds took a flyer on him. The 0-2 pitch. And the first 0-2 pitch to Mezzarocco. Wainwright got away with. He hung one up in the zone, and he wasn't going to let that happen again. A little sharper on that delivery, trying to get him to chase. Mezzarocco going to get the lion's share of the catching duties. Corky Miller called up from AAA to replace Hannigan. Miller, a veteran. But Mezzarocco, the 2010 Minor League Player of the Year for Cincinnati. Corky Miller has been around for three decades. Feels like it. Goes back to the days of uh, Gooky Dawkins. Corky and Gooky, and there's somebody else in that uh, trio that they had. You remember what I'm talking I about? I do, I do. Some guys just have baseball Pokey. names. Pokey Reese. Pokey. Two balls and two strikes on Devin Messarocco. It's a high draft choice by the Cincinnati Reds. 15th overall in 2007. Held on to by Yachty. And that's the second strikeout for Adam Wainwright. MLB.com at bat. The number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At Bat Delivers, Cardinals Baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at Bat to 31826 or visit Cardinals.com. 
Latos is hitting 167. Pretty healthy cut there. Open stance, nice swing. Don't remember him swinging the bat that well. Perhaps he's been working on that a bit. Brooke Jacoby, their hitting coach. You know, back in the day, the hitting coach wouldn't work with the pitchers. The hitting coach, the, Johnny Lewis was the hitting coach in the, in the 80s for the Cardinals, and he wouldn't waste the time with us pitchers. Kind of like, you guys, you don't know what you're doing. I'm, you know, let somebody else work with you. So our pitching coach would actually work with us on hitting. Didn't help. One and two on Latos. Career 119 hitter, Matt Latos. Breaking ball, slowly hit. Taken there by Freeze. And speaking of David Freeze, he'll lead it off. Trying to get things going for himself and the St. Louis Cardinals tonight. On Sunday, May 12th, 25,000 fans, 16 and older, receive a floppy sun hat presented by Diet Coke and Schnooks. Bring your mom to the game or pick one up for her Mother's Day weekend. That's Sunday, May 12th. Get your tickets now at cardinals.com slash promotions. What a beautiful night for baseball. And David Freeze will lead it off as we move to the home half of the second. It'll be Freeze, Wigginton, and Cosmo. Cardinals need to get this guy going. He's hitting 178. No home runs, and he's driven in three. You pick one Cardinal you'd like to get hot, it'd be this guy. David can carry the team offensively when he is hot, and it, and it also seems that he could be kind of a trigger for other players around him to swing the bat better. You just kind of always have this sense when David's hitting, Alan Craig's hitting, and everybody else in the lower part of the lineup and Molina I think he can really jump start the offense and really he's had some awful awful at bats for David Freeze and and he would be the first to agree with that in fact he, he says he's just not seeing the ball seems like he's late in his recognition of the pitch and and he's kind of having a lot of kind of emergency hacks we call them where you're just kind of sticking the bat out and hitting the ball the other way and that's not driving it one ball and one strike. He's a leadoff man here in the second inning. So he chops it towards third. And there's one away. Get to the ballpark today. You see the name of Ty Wigginton in that lineup. So Carlos Beltran sits tonight. Craig moves out to right field. And you have Ty Wigginton at first base tonight. Hitting just 167 on the year. No home runs, and he's driven in one RBI. Oh. 
popped up. Messerocco is running out of room, about three or four rows deep in the green seats. One ball, one strike. Wiggins in, hits it sharply to third. Two outs. So two outs and nobody on, and it brings in Pete Cosmo. Never understood why the first baseman falls back. When he's catching that ball right there. Well, instead I, of stretching forward and just getting himself out of the way. Well, I think what you're doing is, you know, the ball's going to clear the runner. You're trying to make sure you clear the runner. And and part of the reason is you want to make sure you don't get caught catching the ball on top of the base if it's offline a bit. And if you get caught catching the ball on top of the base and the runner eventually runs through you, I mean, you, be, you end up being in a vulnerable position. And you only do that when the throw is there in plenty of time. Sure. We saw Albert Pujols early in his career stretch out with his left hand towards the left on a on a on a throw that was towards the infield side of the bag, and the runner ran into him and hurt his elbow. And that's a classic baseball injury, and, and he was taught to stop doing that. One ball and two strikes. Check swing and he did go. Strike out of Pete Cosma. Number two on the night for Matt Latos. Top of the lineup due up for Cincinnati when we come back. Brought to you by Schnucks, your neighborhood hometown grocer. Steel, available exclusively at a servicing steel dealer. Visit steeldealers.com. And the Chipotle Chicken Club combo is back for a limited time at Jack in the Box. Try one today with prize and a drink for just $4.99 plus tax. Rick, we've had a lot of people here at the ballpark, also on the Twitter, asking us about uh, Mitchell Boggs. And... Mike Matheny said today that uh, yesterday afternoon was as close to right as he's been. Now he also said I understand the media no one is going to agree with that. However and he was quick to say that. Yes he was and uh, Mike though they looked at tape they also watched uh, obviously during the game and they felt that his stuff wasn't bad and 
you know, you think about the, the near strikeout, the little blue pit. A lot of things have gone wrong that if maybe a pitch or two goes right, we're talking about a, a different looking Mitchell Boggs. There's no defending the results of Mitchell Boggs so Correct. far. That's not what we're talking about. I will say, if he'd had the seven or eight games that he's had recently in the middle of the season, we might not be talking about it because when you have a bad start, it gets magnified because that is your ERA. That's your whole season. But you have a decent start. You have a few six or seven or eight bad games in the middle, and your ERA goes from two to four. Nobody really kind of pushes the same panic button yet. But, you know, Mitch has got to figure it out, and, and he's got to make better pitches. No doubt about that. But we did see him throwing downhill. And with good sync and good movement and good velocity on, let's say, a handful of pitches. And I think that's what Mike's talking about. Not enough. Because when you come out of the bullpen, you can't make mistakes. You don't have room to make mistakes. You throw 15 pitches in a game, 14 of them better be good. So Zach Kozart, the second man in their lineup. Sacrifice back in the first. That is off the glove of Cosma and a base hit by his counterpart at short. Turn to our keys to the game, a presentation of Toyota. We turn to pick number 50, Adam Wainwright, in our keys to the game. Good command of Wainwright, the 37 strikeouts, best in the National League. The ratio also best in the National League. Cincinnati Reds pitching 107 walks, most in the National League. Bit surprising. The Reds have also given up the most home runs in the National League, and the Cardinals have given up the least. One out, out and a runner at first. And a lot of that, Dan, has to do with the ballpark they pitch in. And both bullpens really haven't been that good this year. It's not just, uh, you know, the Cardinals that have had their issues. Cincinnati has had some issues as well. Not as big a discrepancy, but the starters. For the Reds, much better ERA than their relievers, just like the Cardinals. Reds at 3.08 for their starting pitching, and the bullpen over four. But the guy in the ninth inning is unhittable. Fun to watch. I'd rather watch him on highlights. <laughs> yeah, I would too. Than watch him live. And I definitely don't want to dig in against him. Another flamethrower right there, and Jason Mod. Two balls and no strikes here on Votto. He had a base hit to right first time up. You bring up a great point about Votto earlier where he just will not expand his zone. Now, I'm going to bring a little money into this. You know, he's not paid to walk. He is paid to drive the baseball, to drive in runs, and be a premier hitter, which he is. So you have to wonder, you know, the value of a Joey Votto and it's great if you walk 100 plus times and your on base percentage is high but are you more valuable hitting 30 home runs and driving in 100 plus I think it's a great question the 2 1 pitch and part of the answer is if you do expand your zone as a hitter do you really produce like you think you would and, and some hitters have the ability to do that and, and I, I would say I'd like to see him, if he was my guy, expand the zone at times and to be disciplined enough to know that this is a situation where we need his RBI potential. We don't need a walk. We want you to be our guy. But not every at bat. Big pitch here, 3 1. And Votto hits it to second. Double play for 6 3. A 3 1 pitch turns into a double play.
price, and you'll get a Loge level ticket and a free Cardinals tank top. First college night is tomorrow, so get your tickets at cardinals.com slash college. Adam Wainwright will lead it off for the Cardinals. Home half of the third rolls in, followed by Jay and Carpenter. Wainwright wearing that thumb guard. First guy I ever saw wear that thumb guard was Tommy Herr. In fact, he was trying to patent it in the mid-80s and was talking to an inventor on the East Coast about it being named after him. And he was he would wear a little thing just like that on his on his thumb to protect against being jammed. Tommy Herr, the former second baseman, your former teammate. And at last check, what has uh, Tommy been up to? I know he was in coaching. Coach for a long time. His kids both played minor league baseball for a number of years. And Tom lives in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, same place Bruce Suter is from originally. Couple of hops to second. Brandon Phillips. One away, and we turn to tonight's AT&T Twitter poll. What quality do you want most in a leadoff hitter? Interesting question here. Walks a lot. Long at bats. You want to see pitches, especially that first at bat. You want speed and the steals. How about power? The combination that Ricky Henderson had, arguably the greatest ever to lead off. And we understand with our Twitter poll today that you'd like to have all of them, but we're asking you to pick one. You can't have them all. Just one. I'm going to go with on base percentage. Especially if you have the kind of lineup that both these teams do. Guys like Votto and Phillips and Holiday. Now Molina's a threat. Alan Craig, David Freeze when he's right. Get somebody on and drive them in. I don't want to influence our Twitter voters just yet. Hold that thought. Jay, the first time up, walked the 0 2. And the influence I mean is many will just be contrarian. Whatever I say, they'll vote the other way. So I'm give them a chance to think no, about it. That never happens on Twitter. Here's a 1 2 pitch, and he's hit by a breaking ball. Second time that John Jay is aboard. A walk and now hit by pitch. We're at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Glad you're with us on Fox Sports Midwest. Dan McLaughlin, Rick Elhort, and Jim Hayes. Talked to Matt Carpenter at the cage today, and I said, if you're hitting leadoff, do you change your approach at all? You know, that they're asking you to do something that you're typically, well, at least you haven't been asked to do in the past at the pro level. And he said, not at all. And I followed that up by saying, well, is that because you take a lot of pitches? He said, that's part of it. He said, I actually like hitting deep into account. So I will be seeing a lot of pitches no matter if I'm hitting first or eighth. And that's a style question. And some guys get anxious when they swing at the first pitch or they feel like they're putting the first pitch in play. We see Beltron do that a lot. He's comfortable with that. First ball hitting early in Albert Pujols' career. We bring his name up again. He was really good at hitting that first pitch, and he liked to do it. As he got later in his years in St. Louis, he started to like the deeper counts a little more. And it, I think it, sometimes it's, a, it's just being able to see and kind of work the pitcher to the pitch you want to get. But there are many hitters a lot of pinch hitters that believe that that first pitch is is the one that they feel most comfortable swinging at. here's a 2 0 pitch and it's 3 and 0 I've talked to John Mabry a lot about uh, his philosophy with hitting and one of the things that he talked about that he learned is being a, a pinch hitter he said look you always hear pitchers say I want to dominate the strike zone or I want this side of the plate he says how come a hitter doesn't say this is my side of the plate and he said, you know, you, you've got so much room. Take one half and understand that if you get a pitch in that half, go hack it. That's your pitch. There's a walk after he hit a man. 
Matt Holliday lined out his first time up. Good chance here for the Cardinals. Barnes Jewish Hospital difference maker since 2009. Look at those ranks and what Matt Holliday has done. 2009 is when he arrived on the scene here in St. Louis. Trails Albert in the RBI department by three. Runners at first and second with one down. You could tie him up with one swing of the bat. Holiday bounces it to short. They'll get the lead man. That's Jay. Really a pretty easy play there for Cozart. Momentum taking him that way. They get the lead man, and there's two down. Still waiting for that first home run from Alan Craig, and I'm sure he's sick of hearing about that. He has, though, driven in 18. Craig has been so good with runners in scoring position, back-to-back -back seasons, 400 hitter. And this year, even better, 444 with 17 of the 18 RBIs with runners in scoring position. Always been a good RBI guy. The power has not come yet. I asked Mike Matheny about it. I said, what separates Craig from others in this spot? He said... He has the ability to take himself to a different level where others cannot. Mm. He said he's just an elite pressure RBI player, which was interesting to hear that he called him elite in that regard. Nice thing to have your manager say about you. You bet. He pulls it foul, one ball and one strike. He said when the stakes are, are raised a little bit, he said I'm not sure there's anybody else I want at the plate other than the man right now, Alan Craig. Reggie Jackson, Kirk Gibson. Think of Lou Brock that way. One one pitch to Craig. Reaches for it, hits it to Frazier, force play at second. And the Cardinals are through. St. Louis is stranded four on the night.
in Oakville, Missouri. Good question tonight. Do pitchers today have to pitch to their strengths or the umpire's zone? Carsoup.com. And before we answer that question, it's one to nothing Cincinnati as Phillips will dig in. And Rick, there was a lot of talk about umpires the last couple of days, in particular with uh, Tom Hallion and Mr. Price of uh, Tampa Bay. Those two got into it. And a lot of talk afterwards about the strike zone and the lack of strikes called. So, you know, your era different than what we're watching today what's yeah. the answer to that question well and some would say better some would say worse but the difference is that that the umpires are being judged against quest tech and 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 the the reality of what the technology is showing to be the real strike zone so umpires are judged every night they get a dvd every night how do they do and they ha they get evaluated every single game they do behind the plate based on the real strike zone that is handled electronically so it used to be that the umpires would have a bit of a feel for a pitcher like Wainwright who's trying to hit corners or this corner is pitching in or pitching at the knees and they would kind of adapt the strike zone to what the pitcher was doing so to answer that question is the pitcher now has to pitch to the real strike zone and some would say that's good some would say it's not oh and to the count on Phillips walked his first time up And there would be times where it's a 12 to 4 in the ninth inning of a game on getaway day. And everybody in the ballpark would know that the zone was getting bigger. But now they can't do that. They, it, they just have to call it the way it is. And it was almost a, a common sense move to say that the umpire who could have some, let's say, leeway, and that leeway is gone. Solid single. The bat of Phillips. Took a pitch that was close, extended the at bat, and then drives a single up the middle. In on him, but he's still able to get the bat head on it. Still got the good part of the bat on it and kept his hands inside the ball. And you know, that's a tough pitch to hit. That that really separates the outstanding hitters that they're able to still hit a ball hard. That's a good fastball in on their hands. And Brandon Phillips handled that perfectly. He kept his hands in. And then he still able, was able to stroke it up the middle. And that's not a that's not a get me over fastball from Wainwright. Here's Jay Bruce. Now, just like you, at least I would like to think so. I absolutely adore, love the game of baseball. I love it. I know that. Love watching it, love the intricacies, the I, strategy. I feel a butt coming. Well, here's the deal. A lot of fans will say to us, and I think it's a valid concern, and we've heard about it a ton. As this is chopped towards second, tough to turn to. Can they out there on the first? No way. Not with the speed of Bruce. They do get the lead man. Trade the base runners. But uh, you think about the strike zone, and if it is bigger and truly called the way it's supposed to be called in the rule book, you would have. The time of games sped up. Players would make the adjustment. These are the best in the world at what they do. This is Todd Frazier who digs in. And, and the biggest thing I hear from fans is that, you know, my son or daughter doesn't want to play because it's too slow. They, they love hockey. They've got football. You've got basketball. You've got video games, whatever the case may be. Now, to me, that's the beauty of the sport. I agree. One of the beauties. However, to appeal to the masses and especially a younger generation of fans that will carry this game through and you, know, you wonder if you have to start looking at ways to somehow speed up the game for instance Frazier steps out getting the sign adjusting you know now finally steps in where many times a guy like Votto just stays in the box I love that you're there to hit get in the box here's the one pitch well I think the the baseball reality of what the game really is, Dan, is you know if you have if you have a plane to catch, don't go to a baseball game. <laughs> and and if and don't bring your watch to a baseball game. You know it is not a game where we're looking at the clock and, and shouldn't be. And but yet I know we feel that way. But and, and when young kids play baseball, they play hour and fifteen minute games. Yep. So they're on a clock. They're th they're training that way and they're thinking that way. Runner goes and it's tapped up the first baseline, but rolls foul. And sometimes that's just because the pitchers are having 
trouble throwing strikes and, you, and you'll be there all night if you don't. But but to be trained, I think, to enjoy that aspect of the game, that it's kind of a timeless game. It's it's where you can just get lost in the game and get lost in your connection with your family at the game, keep score, get the popcorn. I don't care what time it is. I think that's part of what people love about this game and being at the ballpark, in my, in my view. Hey, I'm just bringing it up. Yeah. No, I'm one of those that loves yeah. it. Yeah. No, I agree. Here's a one-two pitch. But I think that the point being is that it's the, the younger generation. Yeah. You know, the kids of today. And not all are like that. Some truly love the game of baseball. And, uh, you think those ladies care what time it is? Well, that's the thing. When you're at the ballpark, I don't ever hear anybody complain. A couple of them don't know who's at, who's at the plate right now. Who cares? There's a fly ball lifted at deep right. And it is over the head of Craig. Bruce on his way to third. He'll stop there. Opposite field. And a double for Todd Frazier. He's one for two on the night. And it brings in Xavier Paul. This could prove to be a big hit in this game as Frazier, who's shown a lot of power, takes it the other way over the head of Alan Craig. And Bruce had to hold up. He wasn't sure if Craig was going to catch that ball and just really took off into that corner. And he has to stay at third. And again, we mentioned trading. Brandon Phillips for Jay Bruce on the base pass. That was a good deal for the Cardinals. Otherwise, it'd be 2 0 right now. The corners are in for St. Louis. Here's Xavier Paul. Runners at second and third. Ground ball that's pulled foul. Again, Ty Wigginton, a start at first base tonight. Freeze over at third. If you're wondering about Matt Adams, news is. Good on Adams. He'll go on a rehab assignment Thursday and Friday. And next Tuesday, the Cardinals will activate him, and they feel that there will be no issues with that, especially with the weather warming up. Cardinals will be on the road, and Adams should be with the team next Tuesday. Here's the 0 1 pitch. So Matt Adams dealing with that sore oblique, and this is something that they've been working on constantly. Matt Adams around the bag, and Jose Okenda was telling me that for a big guy, he said, don't overlook Matt Adams defensively. We feel he's going to be a pretty good defensive player. Soft hands around the bag. The weight loss has helped him. Love the teaching there too. Jose showing him. You watch what I do, and then I'm going to watch what you do. And 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 Jose teaches infield play as better as well as anybody that that I've seen in baseball. Perry Hill's kind of the other guru infield coach. He's with the Marlins, but he and Jose are very well respected and should be. One and two, the count. And what Jose does very early when he says somebody can do it. He spots whether or not a guy has soft hands or not. And he can spot whether somebody has good range. And there's only so much you can do to get a player from A to B. But if anybody can do it, it's Jose. Two pitch fouled back. The other thing about Jose is he played multiple positions with the Cardinals, played all infield positions with an outfielder at times, and now he's talking about how to make a throw to second base. And, and you can't just take for granted that, that Matt Adams has really thought through all of the details about where you are in the field and how you might position your feet. And Jose being very, very specific about the spot on the infield that he'd be throwing from on a 3-6-3 double play there. And that's it out of play. What kind of teammate was Jose? Oh, he's awesome. Outstanding teammate. 
You know, my thought of team of Jose, every time you get see him at the ballpark, guys used to do this in the day. They would wear kind of those rubber suits to go run, and, and, that, and I would watch Jose running around the ballpark. He'd be the first one at the ballpark, and he would run for four or five miles. He was a runner, and he would run a lot. He actually ran a marathon, I think, in Puerto Rico at one point. But he was always the first guy there. And that's on the turf, the old turf. Oh, the stadium oh too. Yeah. Hot St. Louis summer. You and I have played a, a lot of golf with Jose, and uh, he still has those soft hands. I'm not sure about the reactions, but uh, the soft hands are pretty good. Hey, Mott, <laughs> you're not playing right now. Watch the game. Protect Help me, me out. <laughs> He's not happy. <laughs> Oh, he's not happy because his team's losing one nothing. Here's a one two pitch breaks his bat that goes flying into the seats over the Cardinal dugout and a run will score. That winds up about four or five rows deep behind the Cardinal dugout. Scary stuff right there as the run does come in to score. Well I'm glad Dan you saw where the ball went because I couldn't bear to watch the ball. I was concerned about the bat. Right in on the hands Ooh. of Paul. It's an RBI. And fortunately, looks like nobody's hurt over there behind the Cardinals dugout. Intentional walk up, Messerocco, and they will put Matt Latos on. Put him on the spot with two runners on. So the Cardinals trail by the score of two to nothing. in there Jason <laughs> I'm telling you I've seen that face from Jose he's not happy <laughs> no. he's tolerating him yeah he's tolerating <laughs> is the right way to put it he's saying will you please put this guy in the bullpen and away from me right now <laughs> runners at first and third with two down and Matt Latos at the plate fastball at a strike we had an infield one year where Jose was playing a lot of first base and we had I think that was the year we had Tommy Hurd second and Terry Pendleton at third. And I was, we had four switch hitters on the infield. And I mean, there wasn't a power hitter in that lot. Took a lot of ground balls and uh, made those outs instead of base hits. Pretty good defense. You bet. Well, the Cardinals yesterday shut out for the third time this season, nine to nothing. They have not scored a run tonight, and things just seem a little flat. Even Mike Matheny addressed that after the game yesterday. One of the club's flat performances. There haven't been many this year. But as he said, this team is grinding. And you know, when you're not hitting, we always discussed this many times. That's exactly right. You just, it's just, how can you look excited when you ground out the second base? It's just not an exciting play in baseball. So when you're not hitting, you are flat. Strike two on Latos. Matchups for the series are very good. Jaime Garcia, Bronson Arroyo tomorrow. Garcia easily could be four and one if not for a couple of blown saves. And then you have Lance Lynn, four and zero. Oh. Homer Bailey, one and two. Bailey was roughed up in the previous day game earlier this month. Against St. Louis and Lance Lynn racking up the strikeouts and the wins. There's a strikeout for Wainwright, but the Reds add to their lead. Home half of the fourth coming up, and Yachty trying to jumpstart the offense when we come back.
delicious. Say good morning to the new egg white delight McMuffin with just 250 calories. Now just one dollar at McDonald's. Then it must says, be so. Oh, you you got to take it in. He says. Hey, a happy uh, second birthday to AJ Sheritz. Celebrating with a little cake tonight, dressed up in his Cardinal uniform and celebrating his second birthday. Now, does that young man right there care what time it is? Well, I'm not sure he knows anything about his life at this point, <laughs> much less the time. But yes, you're right. But he's just enjoying being at the ballpark, which I, I just I just love that about this game. I really do. God bless mom. She may be having second thoughts. About the husband or the kids. <laughs> this. I know my wife's response. <laughs> you better move on. Yep. <laughs> Two nothing lead for Cincinnati, and here is Yadier Molina. How about a double A today? Xavier Scruggs, two home runs, five RBIs. He now has seven homers this year. That's a name that keeps popping up. Yep. We've seen him on the website with plus days offensively multiple times. There's a base hit for Molina. Also making that start today was Carlos Martinez. And I know a lot of fans are asking about Carlos. He is getting very close, Rick, to either promotion or you know, talking about being in that conversation of maybe being brought up to the big leagues. This uh, replay brought to you by Hyundai. And to his credit, even though he had the visa issues, came in in great shape. They thought they'd have him at an extended spring. That's not the case. So he's been pitching at double A and uh, gave up a home run today. But five innings of really good baseball. Well, the visa issue is very frustrating. We talked about Manus being able to impress in spring training. And Martinez wasn't able to because he wasn't there. And it's good that he's done what you said, came in ready to go. And there'll be a time, there's some arms down on that Cardinal system that we'll see eventually. I, I don't think we have to rush that. Eventually they'll be here. A couple of them need to continue to develop, and I think he's one of them. And the dirt to David Free. Speaking of spring training, his was cut short. And now looking back on it, you would think that it was probably a wise move. It's easy to say this now, but to not have Freeze activated for opening day, and that's such a hard thing to do. David Freeze, one of the most popular players, World Series hero, hometown kid. You know, he wants to play, but in retrospect now, you know, he's trying to get his timing down, and it's become an issue. His average is at 174, and spring training issue was that he struggled to get that timing down because of injury and he was ready to go we thought one game that we were televising in spring training and it was going to be his coming out party after being hurt by hurting his back running into a railing on the third base side towards the dugout and kind of bothered him for a while we thought he was going to come back and it got aggravated and, and so he wasn't able to do it and that's why it kept getting pushed back and you know a back issue is is no fun for anybody but for a hitter, you know, is does it is it still affecting him? I mean, I think that's a question you have to ask. Is is he as limber as he is comfortable? And and yeah, it's a matter of timing, Dan. But yeah, you want him there for opening day. But maybe they could have had him on the DL a little bit longer. Even. And maybe that couple more that's starts in Triple A. Yeah. yeah, could have extended him down there a little bit more. And again, Easier he, said than done they, now, but he, no question. You can understand all the reasons as to why they wanted him. As he strikes out. So Freeze is 0 for 2. And it brings in Ty Wigginton. Curveball 77 miles an hour, and, and that's just not good pitch recognition for David Freeze. He did not see the spin on it. If he knows it's a curveball, he doesn't spin at that pitch. Swing at that pitch because he knows the spin is downward, he knows it's going to break. Knows it's going to essentially hit the plate, which it did. But he couldn't stop his swing in time. Ty Wigginton grounded out sharply first time up. Look, this is a tough game. And trying to get your timing back oh. at this level. Yeah, the pitcher's not helping you. No. I mean, you're 
within this week you're facing the Latos and Steven Strasburg and you know guys that are some of the best and uh, well, right now Freeze is is clearly not himself with all the folks kind of piling on the Cardinals bullpen right now I think it's still good to remember that they're one of the best 750 pitchers on the planet you know each each team actually not even 750 the 100 best 750 players on the planet you're talking about pitchers only 250 big league pitchers so they're elite 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 but they're struggling two balls and one strike Two and two on Ty Wigginton. One of the names that keeps popping up all the time is Michael Walker, who's just been sensational down in the minor leagues. Now we're hearing a lot about John Gast as well. And a reason that Gast is not here, and the Cardinals were looking for a long man. He's a starter, just like Manus, but he pitched yesterday. So Gast is off to a great start. Triple-A Cardinals uh, thought about it but uh, he would have been unavailable basically for this series he is a starter he pitched yesterday so Manus is here and not guessed it's all about timing How fun is that to be sitting out in a bullpen picking in your first big league game? You know, Seth Manus has been at the ballpark how many days in his life, but he's never had a day like this one. Everything is clear, everything is magnified, everything is intensified, and I mean, none of his food stayed down. And the joy, but he's feeling a joy too. I mean, just this is a big deal for him, and congratulations to Seth. Slowly hit towards third. Frazier bare hands. Nice play. How good was that? Todd Frazier, nice play down at third with more on Manus. Let's check in with Jim. Yeah, he said he had no idea that he was about to be called up until he got the news from his manager. And I asked him the feeling of walking into the Cardinal Clubhouse, big smile on his face. Dan, he said, kid in a candy store. Kid in a candy store. He was elated. And it's not like, you know, he's walking into a, a clubhouse that's foreign to him because right. he knows these guys from spring training. So there's a familiarity, at least in that regard, but certainly nothing like this sitting well, out in the bullpen in a major league game. And we have good affiliates in Memphis and in Springfield. So he's used to top notch organizations that are run well. But there's an electricity about being in front of 50,000 people in the big leagues that is different. I mean, you know that everything that he does today on the mound. The whole country can know about and watch cool. and watch the highlights and get on MLB.com and and you know they're not probably not going to check Memphis. It's just a fact. And you add to that the fact that it's no doubt a lifelong dream of his to someday be a big leaguer. And the runner goes from second and an easy steal. No surprise. Who else? Yadier Molina. Smart base runner takes a couple leads and then after those steps just takes off steals that on Latos. We've seen Yachty do that many times. So here's an issue when Yachty gets that kind of jump. What does the third baseman do? Does he cover in case there's a throw? He knows that Yachty's going. He's the only one but he said never mind. No sense in going. And you just. Got to hope at that point that the catcher sees that you're not there. Two balls and one strike. Wainwright is on deck. 
Cardinals in this spot elected to pitch around as to get to Latos but Wainwright is a much different hitter than Matt Latos and the Reds have a two nothing lead. That's another reason. The 2 2. Cosma strikes out. Fastball at 93 and caught looking. Ty Wiggington is 0 for 2 tonight. Hit a bullet the first time to Frazier. That time he got him on the slow roller. With just two hits, Wainwright and Latos, and Latos gets away with a pitch here. You notice the up and in location from Mezzarocco, and this is the last pitch to end the fifth inning. He doesn't hit that spot, but you know what? He hit another pretty good spot down and away, and a call third strike on Pete Cosma. One of four strikeouts for Latos here tonight. Our charter high speed pitch, Latos hitting 93 miles an hour, Wainwright 94, both pitchers with good stuff. Here tonight, Wainwright touched for a run in the first as well as one in the fourth. He's given up five hits. Want to remind everybody that tomorrow's Cardinals game will air on Fox Sports Midwest Plus in the St. Louis area and on an alternate channel on DirecTV, Dish and Uverse, due to the overlap with game one of the Kings and Blues. So good luck to the St. Louis Blues, game one of their series against the uh, defending Stanley Cup champions and we should mention that if you're wanting tickets plenty of seats available I understand for games one and two for the Blues so just head to their website right now St. Louis Blues.com to get those seats for games one and two the Blues and Kings beginning tomorrow night to his left Carpenter makes the play Shin Su Chu is out number one again swinging at the first pitch High on base percentage we talked about. He doubled and scored in that first inning, and he did that swinging at the first pitch. You ready for my prediction? I, I'm i not sure. Do I have to commit whether I'm ready or not? No, because it's okay. going to come your way anyway. So I might be ready. I'm going with the Blues in six. Blues in six. Outstanding. That's a lot of applause here in our booth from all of the uh, folks helping us out here. and. I, for one, am very excited about the playoffs. I love watching the Blues. It's awesome. They're really just such a great product, and and we know just how good the Blues fans here are in St. Louis. We, we love the Cardinal fans, but the Blues fans are just as rabid and just as supportive of the Blue Note. Cozart grounds out to Cosma, two away. Blues added their two big defensemen. They've got hot goaltending here down the stretch. And home ice advantage. They played well down the stretch at Scott Trade Center. Blues in six. Ricky is online right now booking a ticket to Vegas <laughs> based on my prediction. Unbelievable. 
You know your hockey, Dan. Well, I don't know about that. I'm think just going I, blues and six. I think I'm going to ask David Freeze. Is that all right? That won't hurt your feelings. Now he knows his hockey. Yes, he does. As Joey Votto digs in. One ball, one strike. Votto got it started with a single and an RBI in the first. Also bounced into a 4 6 3 double play. Blues in the uh, early 2000s as Wainwright gets a new baseball. They were loaded. That team should have won the Stanley Cup. Had a couple of teams that could have won the Stanley Cup. But then there's this thing called goaltending. And if you don't have that, you don't win. Is it kind of like having a bullpen? Kind of the same kinda thing? Kind of like that. Here's a 2 1 pitch. Good pitch. 2 and 2. I mean, you can go to your, you know, best Rick Patino, because I'll tell you right now, Horton, <laughs> Grant Fuhrer ain't walking through that door, okay? That's your speech? That's yeah. your pregame speech? Yeah. So get it done. I'll see if I can get you in there. Do you know the uh, speech I'm referring to? Yeah, I do. One of the all-timers. Rick Bettino was the head coach of the Boston Celtics, and well, he was struggling. And uh, I hate to tell you, folks, Larry Bird is not walking through that door. Robert Parrish is not walking. Kevin McHale. So I'm just going to say, let's get some goaltending, and the Blues win. I'm motivated. Positive reinforcement. There's a line out. Positioning is perfect as Freeze makes the play. It's a 1 2 3 inning. Just head to stlouisblues.com. Cards and Reds here on Fox Sports Midwest and a two run lead for Matt Latos and Cincinnati as we move to the home half of the fifth. It's Wainwright, Jay, and Carpenter for St. Louis. The Cardinals just two base hits tonight. You mentioned Wainwright swinging the bat better than Latos in his career, but he's certainly been doing that this year, Dan. Last year, Adam did not have a good year at the plate, and we're kind of guessing that it may have had something to do with his. Injury and kind of rehabbing that maybe the not just the timing, but even the sensitivity of Does he really feel right to just air out the swing? But he's been really swinging the bat well the average of 214 But you can just kind of tell he's back to being more comfortable taking full hacks at the plate 
A 1 0 pitch, it's popped up, and Phillips calls for it. From Brandon Phillips, look at how good this is going to work. This is just an unbelievable segue by Mike Kelly. Nice. Phillips 66. What a great deal on Cardinals tickets. Fill up at Phillips 66 with eight gallons or more. Now until June 30th, receive up to 50% off on a pair of tickets to a Cardinals home game. For more information, visit cardinals.com slash Phillips 66. How much money Brandon Phillips could make if he changed his number to 66? And all baseball fans everywhere say he's already making enough. Just saying. It's trying to be a marketing genius up here. Hockey predictor, marketing yep. genius. Doing it all. Yep, go ahead and mortgage the uh, kids' college fund. Blues in six. Heard it here first. One ball, one strike on John Jay on base twice with a walk, and he's also been hit by pitch. Really took something off that pitch. I think the decision to put him back in that leadoff spot here today has a lot to do with the success we talked about against Latos. Here's the curveball. No success on that particular pitch. But 9 for 20 in his career. He's been on base twice. You mentioned a walk and a hit by pitch. How about Michael Walker tonight through four innings? No runs. ERA now at 1.67. Checking up on the Memphis Redbirds. John Mosalock asked about Michael Waka. Was he thought of as a guy that could be brought up right now? And he said, look, do we think this guy is going to be a, a stud and a star? Yes. Very similar to what we've seen from Adam Wainwright, his makeup, even the look of the two. We think he's going to be very, very good. But he said, you have to keep in mind, you know, think about Adam Wainwright, nearly four and a half years in the minor leagues before being called up he said you know you look at Lance Lynn couple of years plus in the minor leagues before being called up he said we just don't want to bury him he's getting better and better and better let him have success and then hey he's only a phone call away if we need him Wainwright had those years in the minor leagues because he also signed younger that's part of it and Waka was a guy that played some college baseball played a lot of college baseball and so he signed at a, at, a, at a later age, and so you'd think they could rush him quicker, but still the experience, still important. You're trying to judge your needs versus the pitcher's developmental needs, especially if they're a guy that's going to be a big impact guy. Phillips backhands and takes the hit away. What's on tap? It's the uh, Cards and Reds tomorrow. And we'll see the pitch maker Bronson Arroyo racking up the innings yet again this season. Budweiser, what's on tap? Cards red, 6.30 tomorrow. Fox Sports Midwest Plus. Basically, that's a season that he has pitched against St. Louis. Do you see those numbers? 32 starts he has made against the Cardinals. Some good ones and some bad ones in there. Royo is certainly a competitor. And he's fun to watch pitch to me. Very different than Latos here. Latos more of a power guy. Royo's a finesse guy. All kinds of arm angles and movement, change ups, curveballs. And there's a base hit to right. Matt Carpenter, a two out base hit. No batting gloves. Matt Carpenter. Got a fastball to his liking. Holidays do, isn't he? Two home runs this year. Lined out to right, also grounded into a fielder's choice. 
He represents the tying run here in the home half of the fifth. Ground ball left side base hit. The Cardinals back to back singles. And it brings in Alan Craig with two outs and two on. Matt Holiday finds a hole. He hits a lot of ground balls through the infield hard. One of those sabermetric stats that's kind of growing in popularity and and I've often talked about it being misused a bit but it's called BABIP which is batting average of balls in play which is meant some say to talk about the luck that a hitter experiences to me it's a it's a good indication of just how hard they hit the ball and how well they're able to find holes because they hit the ball through the infield with that good top spin and and just drive the ball and that's what holiday does Two outs and two on for Alan Craig. Big gap in left center field. Situation just for Alan Craig, isn't it? Two outs, runners in scoring position. This is it. 0 1 pitch. Now 0 and 2. That first pitch may have been the one that Alan Craig would love to have back. He had not happy about swinging at that second pitch and he kind of grabbed his bat in frustration after the swing. You don't see too much emotion out of Alan Craig. And I mean that in a good way. You don't see him really kind of lose his cool ever. And he was not happy with himself clearly on that last pitch. It was a ball out of the zone and chased it. O2, little chopper up the middle. Phillips diving for the bag and got it. Again, Brandon Phillips saving a run. He's done that for the second time tonight. First time was to his left. This one, the backhand to his right. And he beats Holiday to the second base bag. This season, they've added StubHub fan rewards so you can get extra with your tickets and your purchase, like seat upgrades. So head to StubHub and get your Cardinals tickets today. Along with Rick Gordon, Jim Hayes, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Good ball game tonight. Cardinals trailing two to nothing as we move to the sixth inning here in St. Louis. And no surprise, Brandon Phillips right in the middle of things, Rick, especially with his glove. Well, he can hurt you with the glove as much as he can with the bat. We've seen him do it both ways. do with his legs too he runs well two time all star three time gold glover
And the first pitch is taken for a strike. Following his last start, as Phillips has walked in single tonight, talked to Wainwright about what he does in his motion. And you'll notice at times he'll have the pause at the top. Other times it's more of a fluid motion with no pause. And right there it didn't even go to the top. Which is something that has changed a bit. And there are times you mentioned where he'd go much further over his head. And, and that that's really getting out of vogue. Pitchers, old time pitchers, I mean way back used to go way over their head. But that's really kind of a wasted movement. And sometimes can tie you up and get get you too late in your delivery. Over his head there. Backhanded by Wainwright. Nice play. He's won a gold glove before. He's athletic on the mound. No, no question. Wainwright's uh, thought process of doing that, he said, look, we always try to vary up our pitches with speeds. Why not try to vary the delivery to the plate? I think it makes a lot of sense. Tom Seaver used to do that. Hall of Famer. There are times where he'd even double pump. We've seen Wainwright do that, where he'd double pump. He'd go up and then go up again. Again, it's all meant to throw off the timing of the hitter. Alan and I talked about it too. His index finger haven't seen that up as much on the breaking ball. I asked him in Washington about that. He says, I don't even know. He said, it's all feel. If I go into the glove and you know, I don't have the right grip, it may pop up that index finger that we've uh, seen at times with the breaking ball. And he said, other times it doesn't. Just all about feel. Interesting that he has not gone over his head a few times tonight. Other times he has. Usually you never see that. No. And you want to make sure what you're doing is you're not kind of developing a habit of doing it on a particular pitch. You go over the head on the fastball, you don't on the curveball, or vice versa. And I think Wainwright's trying to maybe play a little cat and mouse game with him because he knows what he's doing. Trying to give the umpire. Paul Nart, our home plate umpire, a little bit of time here. I believe he just said, Thank you. Painful, painful. Wouldn't want to be Paul Nart right now. Gritting his teeth. One out and nobody on, and here's an 0-2 pitch to Jay Bruce. For Wainwright, it is strikeout number four on the night. Pitch count is up to 85. Molina wants it up. He's asking for it up in the zone against the left-handed hitting Bruce, and that's exactly where it goes. Just out of the zone. Bruce can't lay off of that. And he can't hit it. Wainwright. Dan, we've talked about it. And really it started in spring training with Rob Johnson the triple A catcher who talked to Wainwright about trying to get some fastball strikeouts up in the zone right you're talking about what an organization does to help one another even a guy that didn't make the ball club but yet as a veteran catcher saw that Wainwright's fastball up in the zone would complement the curveball and he should try it and, and Wainwright goes right to using it and he's been successful with it. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Todd Frazier. Taken for a ball outside. Frazier, nice ball game tonight. Couple of good plays down at third. Double back in the fourth. He's one for two. The 
check swing and did not go. Everyone's favorite down at first. The crew chief, Angel Hernandez. I sense some everybody's sarcasm. favorite. <laughs> we love them. You're trying to love let's them. go blues. <laughs> Angel. You're losing it Dan. But I'm with you. I'm you here to help. I'm, I'm here to help you. I do know, you where, you're know where I'm going. Yes I do. Trying to get something going here. Cardinals aren't scoring. Should have been a strikeout. And I can't believe you contacted Ann between innings and said, Honey, put the house up. Losing six. I'm just backing you, Dan, is what I'm doing. Appreciate that. You said it. I believe it. There it is, a strikeout for Adam Wainwright on the 2 2 pitch. Back to back K's and five tonight for pick number 50. For the Reds, but they've also gotten some help defensively. First, it's Todd Frazier, third baseman, taking a hit away from Ty Wigginton. That was early on. Then it's Brandon Phillips getting into the act. Backhand play. And to end the last inning, up the middle against Alan Craig, the play and the dive to stop the Cardinal rally in the fifth inning. Brandon Phillips showing why he has those three gold gloves. Ricky, you and I were talking before the game. It's uh, 